subconsciously, the people already know that they are trapped by these familiar, these familiar spirits, these familiar entities, these familiar ideas that they cannot put in any, any logical, they can't explain, for example, what's up with the diva thing? Why did everyone grab it? Do, do people even know what diva means? Most of the people who use diva. Diva is a goddess. A diva is a goddess. And in a sense, the kogal, right, the kogal or the gogal is also a goddess, at least in that school of thought. Now, from a Hebraic perspective, the, the kogal or the gogal is a prostitute, is a whore, is a hoe, is a bitch, basically. But from the worshipful perspective, in other words, from those who worship this, this kogal or this prostitute is also the diva, right? And the diva is also a goddess. You understand? Now, this is side the real. This is taking the very same idea and looking at it from the two different schools of thought, from both schools of thought. So if you are of that school of thought, mm -hmm, in other words, if you receive and love, accept those ideas, well, this is, yes, this person is a diva. Now, you're a diva, and then you are a so-called Christian. In other words, doesn't Christianity say to avoid idols and idolatry and fornication or pornication? And, and the fornication is not, or the fornication, of, what is pornication? It's not just the nude pictures or naked pictures or things that are so-called sexually explicit, but it is a rite of worship. So now this gold gal becomes for the young woman, it becomes a rite of passage. That's why you have the stripper pole. This is what we tried to bring forward a little bit in some of the earlier reasons when we was talking about what happened, you know, um, in, uh, at Val Pior, the situation at Val Pior, which is coming up in a couple of uh, sabbatical, sabbatical readings and feedings, the situation that at, at, at Baal Peor, where the Israelites, it's, it's like the golden calf. This also connects very intimately with the whole idea of the golden calf. If you look at the golden calf incident, while the people had been redeemed, you understand, and had been brought out of Egypt while they traveled in the wilderness, they longed for the forms of worship that they were familiar with. You understand? And the Bible now tells us what that form of worship was. It was a party. But it was a departing from the way of Jah. It was a departing from the way of God. This is one of the reasons why with the current fallen status of the lost sheep, black folks, black people, we blame the black church. Because the black church has become worldly and has not held to the love and the defense of the truth from the very first important issue, and that's the identity of this lost sheep. Because most of the lost sheep don't even know convincingly that they are Beta Israel. So what do they think of themselves? They think of themselves as Gentiles. You understand? So they are born as Gentiles. They live as Gentiles, and they die as Gentiles, and many of them will go to Gehenna. You understand? Gehenna is what some of you people call hell. But hell is a state of consciousness of your worst nightmare. Let's just put it like that. You know, your worst nightmare, your, your, your worst, in other words, you have to deal with all the psychic burden that you refuse to let go of and to give up to the Savior, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, you understand, and to repent and to be born again. So it's interesting when we hear folks say, well, um, Whitney, is, um, Whitney Houston or others are in heaven in the sense, because the Bible basically doesn't speak like that. 
The Bible doesn't say after you die, you go to heaven. No, the Bible teaches that after you are born again in spirit and truth, you enter into the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is the profession of Christianity, of Christina. You understand? That is the kingdom of heaven. Now, what happens after one dies? Well, it says after one dies, well, then is the judgment. You understand? But what sort of a judgment? It's a judgment of your spirit, of your soul, of your psychic, of your, of, of, of your, of your essence, not your body, the flesh. You see, this world is really about the flesh. You see, and this is why the demons, the demonic, the reptilian influence, which is part of that reptilian um, part of the brain. You see, there's that reptilian part of the brain. And um, scientists and psychiatrists and, and brain experts and those who've been studying the, what they can see, the data, so forth and so on, they say this is the lower aspect. This is the instinctual aspect. And many of these things that we are encountering now when we look at these um, Illuminati videos and we're looking at the conspiracy and different elements and different people are pointing different things out in different videos and teaching on these things, most of these are so primitive, are so primitive in the infancy of humanity Yet they have such a powerful resonance. For example, the diva, the diva thing. You understand? How in the world did we get to this diva shit? How in the world did this come about? And, and, and when you think about it, go back 40 years. The only kind of divas, really, was maybe a, a, an operatic singer like Leontine Price because she sung these roles in the opera of so-called goddesses and queens and these kind of, she, she, she performed these roles so excellently and sung them so, so exquisitely, so forth and so on. So that was a kind of a limited thing for ones like, you know, opera singers. How do we get to the point that every project chick and bitch is a diva? You understand? How do we get to this point where it's, it's now about not worship of the giver of life, but worship of the flesh? I mean, go check it out for yourself. There's booty worship. There's titty worship. There's penis worship. There's all kind of body part work. Once again, I tell you, brothers and sisters, we are returning to the very beginnings. You see, and a lot of folks have talked about it. The preachers have preached about it, you know, as it is in the, was in the beginning. I tell you, it's going to be in the end, and it's coming. Yes, you know, they preached about it, but they didn't teach about it. So when we're seeing all these, these various elements, um, Hopefully, we'll get an opportunity in some of the other fuller videos to really explore it and to really show you some of the elements. In fact, we're going to point out Gerald Macy right here. This is one of Gerald Macy's first works, A Book of the Beginnings. And in this book of the beginnings, right, in this book of the beginnings, it might be a little heavy for, for, for some of you all because he goes into, you know, comparisons of some really ancient primitive practices, but he's looking at it from a, a, a spiritual and cultural sociology, how human experience, you know, interpersonal human experience reflected also on their consciousness of deity. It also reflected on their consciousness of morality, and it affected um, large, large ages of humanity. In other words, it's taken humanity nearly 6,000 years to even come to this consciousness that they have experienced 6,000 years and to have evidence of it where they can look at their past 6,000 years. And most folks, 
don't even recall what happened in the last 10 years or five years, or as they used to say, what they had to eat for dinner last night. So there's a memory loss. But what do they say? Ignorance of the law is no excuse. You know, like if I, if I, if I did something, like if I murdered somebody and it was so traumatic that I forgot about it and I don't want to think about it anymore, and so I erased it out of my mind. But if there's evidence that I did this, does that mean because I can't remember that I did it, that I'm going to get away because I, didn't, I, I have no, no memory of it? Or is the evidence that truly I did it, but I, I made myself forget about it? So trying to run away, you understand, from yourself. And I'm not speaking just only individually, but I'm speaking and pleading, you understand, with the lost sheep, with black folks particularly, but with all humanity in the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ to remember, as the Lord says, as Josh says, remember the former days. Remember the former days. Because what we're witnessing, even in this, the, the, the music industry, and, I, and, I, and I, I, I will say the music industry is a good, is a good, um, it's a good study, you know, to really see a lot of the overlapping Elements. I think a lot of these elements of the reptilian satanistic agenda and the Illuminati conspiracy are best illuminated in and through the music industry. You understand? We both get, you know, we get the word, we get the sound, we get the visual, we get the full package in the music industry. And that might help some folks then to recognize if the music industry and the key word is industry, if the music industry is so con controlled by a, a, a secret they, just like in Genesis chapter 11, they journeyed from the east. They found a plane. It's like they journeyed from the east in America, and they found a plane out in uh, Las Vegas, right, and that's what they built Las Vegas, and they say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Then they journeyed from the east a little bit further, found another plane in L.A. and San Francisco, and this is where this Hollywood, Follywood industry came up from. And they built the city, and they built the tower, and they beamed their signals to all the people. And as all the people tuned in to this, this, this frequency, you understand this school of thought, this perception of mind, this consciousness, and received it and even were seduced through the music as it was in the past, in the beginning, so it is now. The people became of one language. They became of one consciousness. And that place was known as Babel, which later becomes known as Babylon. And this is where we're at right now. We're in Babylon, but we are called to come out of Babylon, come out of confusion. How do we come out of Babylon? We come out of confusion. How do we come out of confusion? By studying, by learning, you understand, by accepting the good news of the King of Kings and the testimony of his Christ. This is the first step. The first step is to repent, to think differently. A lot of folks say, oh, you're making too much out of it. It's just music, so forth and so on. Well, some of those folks might be agents. That's why they say that, because they're there to attempt to discourage us and to discourage you from the truth, you see, because they're here to, um, to uh, steal souls. We are supposed to be here to save souls, not I and I ourselves, but the message of truth, the word of truth, spoken with sincerity and spoken with love. So each one has an opportunity to exercise their own free will for, for or against. Our job as a watchman is to proclaim the truth. 
whether folks like it, whether they don't. You know, time is real short. Even if they don't like it, they, they're not going to have a long time not to li- un, not like it. You know what I mean? So the time is short. The days are evil. Redeem the time. My brothers and sisters, we're going to touch on this a little bit more. And, um, in fact, uh, yeah, we'll touch on this in the, in the, in the second part of this, the Kogal part, because I actually went to Wikipedia and we got a link on the Kogal. Just go into it a little bit more so we can figure out what's really behind what Ciara, you understand, is talking about this Gogal and this particular image that she's working so hard to, to project. You understand? It sounds like when you hear a lot of these artists talk, it sounds like they're talking about, like, I'm trying to bring, bring something. Like they're trying to bring themselves out, like, to demonstrate something from themselves, or if you listen to them, it's like they're trying to bring out another entity that is in them, you know, an entity that is still strange and unknown to them, but they are at the service of this entity, and that entity is, uh, is, is a demon, is a demonic, you know, a demonic or alien superimposition, whether it was trauma-based mind control, whether it was some other form of, of programming, you know, the particular form of programming for the particular individual, you understand, might be a little um, unique, you understand, specially tuned towards them. But the basic principles or the basic tactics, you know, and, um, you know, taxi- tactics that they, that they use is more, or less, um, is more or less the same. So stay tuned for the next part of this. And uh, shalom to my brothers and sisters, Ras Tafari.